everyone, my name is Madison Espy and this is my presentation on CSAs, farming cooperatives, locavores, and more. You may be wondering what are farming cooperatives and why do we need them? Farming cooperatives are collaborative organizations where a farm is partnered with other people to conduct its operation. This includes the buying and making of equipment and stock as well as the selling of produce through its own institutions. It's also known as a co-op. It's essentially a business owned and operated by its members and it's built around the principle that the power of a group is much stronger than the power of an individual. They're important in helping the farmer as well as the needs of the community. So how do they work? Farm work consists of demanding work with many hours, raising livestock or growing crops, all for very little pay. These farmers who work alone usually lack access to high quality supplies like seeds and machinery and don't have the financial means to expand. And this is when a cooperative comes into the picture. They work to help individual farmers overcome these obstacles. They work as a collective agribusiness by buying necessary supplies, providing services, and distributing and selling products. There are many different types of co-ops and they're categorized into three types. There are supply co-ops, which purchase and supply inputs like fertilizer and pesticides in bulk, and then sell directly to members at a lower cost than if the farmer were to purchase on their own. And then there are marketing co-ops, which assist in members and the marketing aspect of their products. And lastly, there are service co-ops, and these provide services to members to help fill needs in the community. And this can be anything from housing to transportation. It's also very important to note that most co-ops can fall into multiple of these categories. And in fact, many are a combination of all of them. There are many farmer cooperatives around the world, but to name a few, we have the National Council of Farmer Cooperatives, which has more than 2,000 farmer cooperatives across the country with 16 state and regional councils and they're continuing to grow. There is the National Farmers Union, the International Cooperative Alliance, Cooperative for a Better World, Farmers Co-op Society, and the Farmers Cooperative Association. And this specific association has been working for more than 100 years and has seen major successes in what they're known for, which is the feed, fertilizer, and petroleum division. While co-ops are still prominent in today's world, the system was originally built to support traditional family farmers. So certain structures of how everything is run need to change and grow to succeed in today's competitive business world. And without technological product and service advances, it's difficult for farming cooperatives to stay a competing business, meaning they need to be adaptable and ready to change, grow, and improve to stay in today's world. Community Supported Agriculture, or CSA, is a group of individuals who commit to supporting a farm operation in order to transform the farmland into the community's farm. It works in a very specific way. The members have requests and specific foods and crops, and then the farmers grow them, and they get a percentage of the crop, whether it does good or bad. They're essentially agreeing to support one another and share the risks and rewards of food production. Co-ops versus CSAs. In food co-ops, members purchase from other members with the option available to the consumer if they wanna buy the products or not. If they do, the order is prepared for them and ready to be picked up at a delivery point. A member of a co-op would typically ask, what do you have? In CSAs, members are financially and physically involved in the farming process and production because they're putting money up front to grow specific things for themselves and their community. Someone in a CSA would say, I will pay you to grow X, Y, and Z. A locavore is a person whose diet consists only of locally grown or produced food. And the people who benefit from locavores are the consumer who's eating the food, 
the local markets who are selling the food and the local farmers who are growing and producing the food. Just like anything, there are pros and cons to being a locavore. Some pros include the food tastes better because it hasn't lost any nutrients or started to spoil. There is less waste from packaging and plastics. The food is fresher. One can have improved allergies as these food expose people to allergens. You have shorter travel time. It helps in promoting small businesses and markets and it strengthens the local community. With that, there are also some cons. Regionality is a big one as not everything is able to grow in your specific region. Then we have off slump, off season slump, meaning produce and crops grow in specific seasons so you may not get the same foods year round. Cost concerns as local food can be on the more expensive side and also lack of oversight or government regulations. The local movement is a movement promoting the consumption of locally produced food near where it is purchased and it's used to educate people on where their food is really coming from. Along the same lines of, as a locavore, it is extremely possible, but there are benefits and limitations of it. Some benefits include healthier foods with no huge amounts of pesticides or chemicals. It's environmentally stable as food doesn't have to travel far. It generates a sense of community and grows the local economy. Some limitations include limited variety, higher prices, access barriers, and seasonal limitations. Limited variety and seasonal limitations go into the same kind of thing. Where one crop grows efficiently, a mother, another might not. And then when one crop grows best, another might not. So these are some things to consider. Local versus organic food. And many people think that these are the same thing when they really mean something totally different. Organic foods are categorized under minor nutrient benefits and environmental sustainability. The USDA needs to certify the farmlands to ensure they are truly organic, meaning no chemical pesticides or herbicides. As for local food, they are a more sustainable way of living. They build community and help local businesses and economies to grow. The USDA does not have a defined distance of what is considered to be local, but it is in a range of miles. Here we have a graphic. I really like this because it's, an, it's a visual of why buying locally is beneficial for reasons that one may not think of. It's a pretty packed graphic with numerous reasons to buy locally, from the amount of money that goes back to your community, the lack of travel of your food when it's bought locally, the amount of fuel used to get non-local foods transported to companies and warehouses and stores, and going back to just knowing exactly where your food is coming from when you do buy locally. One may be wondering where to even start. Some ways to support local food include buying right from the farmer. So this can be at farmer's markets, through CSAs, etc. Choosing restaurants that use local food, buying locally made products and brands at grocery stores and supermarkets, planning your meals around what foods or crops are in season, growing your own produce, and being an advocate for other people to start eating locally as well. The Slow Food Movement is a movement to keep local food, cultures, and traditions going while also promoting good, clean, and fair food choices. It opposes fast food and industrial food production. There are the three main elements which are a very important aspect of the Slow Food Movement, and these include good, meaning quality, flavorful and healthy food, clean, meaning not harmful to the environment during the production process, and fair, meaning prices are under fair conditions for producers while being accessible to consumers. And it's important to note the history behind the slow food movement. It was founded in 1989 in Paris and the Slow Food Manifesto was signed. Carlo 
Petrini and a group of activists were the founders, and now over 160 countries with millions of people are participating and working towards their common goal of good, clean, fair food. And to this day, it is continuing to grow and is becoming more and more common in places all around the world. Lastly, I have some questions for you. The first one being, is it easier for someone to eat locally in certain locations around the world? Why is that and what locations make it easy to eat locally? The second question I have is, what is the difference between the local movement and the slow food movement? What are some similarities between the two? And this is my reference page and that pretty much sums up my presentation on CSAs, food cooperatives, locavores, movements, and more. Thank you and I hope that you enjoyed.